dimensions, even if we have to change them through the experiment, they're, they're similar dimensions all the way through them, okay? What we're going to do is focus on the effects of downward pressure on that, okay? So, we've got a couple of things which are fixed, all right? We need to um, keep the duration of the bow drill constant for 45 seconds, Adam, and uh, uh, we want to attempt 720 rotations of the drill. Now, I don't think Adam is going to sit there and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So, what we've done is we've measured the diameter of the drill, we've measured the length of the string, and uh, what we've calculated is that uh, one bow stroke is going to be a push and a pull back, and uh, to achieve 720 rotations per minute, which is need to use 40 bow strokes okay so what he's going to do is going to do 40 bow strokes in that allotted time scale okay experiment number one uh, what we're looking for is to uh, demonstrate only downward pressure um, being recorded by the scale so the only pressure that is going through that drill at the moment is the sheer weight of the drill and uh, just a, a guiding hand to keep it steady and that is all so there's no body weight going down onto this we're going to evidence it hopefully you will be able to read the meter on there we've got a scale and uh, we've got a blank of wood that he can stand on next to it okay now I'm hoping that you will be able to see so you can see there's no body weight going onto that at all okay Right, so uh, Adam is going to stand on that, and, uh, and then he's going to begin his experiment. So no downward pressure, and we're going to go for 45 seconds. Has anybody got a stopwatch? Uh, mine has just stopped. Okay. Uh, Jay, if you could time him for him, is that okay? Okay, so no downward pressure. Whenever you're ready, Adam, go. 45 seconds. Now, what we're expecting from this experiment is that the powder will be a chocolate brown colour. Okay, this is important. If you want to master the bow tool, get into having a look at this powder. Have a look at what it tells you. So we're expecting it to be chocolate brown and we won't have formed an ember. Okay, what we're trying to do is highlight the effect of that downward pressure. Just remember that. Okay. Are we still on no weight, Jay? Jay? Yeah, good. Kev, would you go and get the temperature gauge and just uh, get ready to put that into the powder very quickly for me? And uh, what we should have in there, if we can see the evidence of it, is a light brown powder uh, and it is 20 degrees that is celsius that's going to be room temperature that's oh, are we on it's still 21 degrees celsius light brown powder no ember okay so what it is one of the key problems that we have when we're teaching fire bow is trying to put it across how much downward pressure you need to put through that drill okay if you can understand that much you're then starting a winning battle to start mastering the fire bow. So on the next one, what Adam is going to do, he is going to apply 10 kilograms of downward pressure. Okay, Exactly the same scenario, he's going to uh, drill for 45 seconds, and, uh, and what I'm anticipating is that uh, that powder is going to be a charred black colour, but because he's putting 10 kilograms of weight down into it, we're going to have a distance in the consistency of the powder, the colour of the powder, and he should be successful in creating an ember. Now, I've read lots of different books about what temperature these embers get to and what have you, and, uh, and again, let's do it ourselves and figure it out ourselves. It actually surprised us how low a temperature um, your ember actually gets to. So a little bit more consistency with the, uh, the weight of 10 kilograms and uh, we've got powder being created. See the difference in the colour of that powder straight away. So it's going for 45 seconds. So if you want to go home and you've got bathroom scales if you want to take the measurements of this drill away for us, go and practice 10 kilograms of downward pressure. That will give you an indication of what forces you need to be putting. Now, every single piece of material is going to be different. We have to learn to interact with all of these different, but there we go. Let's have a look. Now, Adam is going to be wafting that ember at the minute, okay? So, uh, just remember, we haven't got combustion. What we've got is uh, we've got evaporation and then we've got pyrolysis starting to happen. 
Yeah, don't let me down, Adam. What a gentleman he is. Uh, that looks like he's got self-sustaining smoke there, without a shadow of doubt. So he's wafting it, wafting it, wafting it. If we could have a look at the temperature, see what we're getting to now. Okay, so we're starting to rise and rise and rise. 82 degrees, 83 degrees. That temperature will rise and rise and rise now. I'm expecting it to get hotter than that. The temperature ranges that we're generally looking at for the, uh, uh, for the complete formation of the ember uh, has varied between 120 and 200 degrees. That is low in comparison to some of the stuff that you read about combustion. And, uh, uh, so, uh, but don't forget, this isn't complete combustion. Let's see if we can have a look at the temperature again. So we're getting there, we're increasing now, increasing. And uh, there we go, 120, I was expecting something within that, within that range getting up to 200. And then we need to start moving that on from the pyrolysis stage, introducing the oxygen, uh, agitating all of those atoms until we get to the stage where we can transfer that through to the fuel and, uh, and getting it up to, uh, uh, up to temperature 300 degrees plus. Okay. <coughs> what we're going to do is just one last experiment just to show you immediately two differences and then that from here is uh, done. What we want to do is highlight the, uh, the, the consistency of the powder. What Adam's going to do is drill for a very, very short amount of time um, and, uh, and we're going to produce two different types of uh, uh, two different types of powder for you. So just give him two seconds uh, to get himself sorted. Uh, what he's going to do is hardly any pressure, and then he's going to push down the maximum amount of downward pressure. What this will show to us uh, in the last 30 seconds or so is uh, what that can mean for your powder. And this, I think, will uh, surprise you uh, if you're used to doing fire bow. Take away this. Uh, this information uh, and please pass it on and teach with it. Okay, if the powder is coming off very, very fine, okay, really, really fine powder, you're not pushing down hard enough. And that is surprising. You know, uh, common sense would dictate that it would be the other way around. Actually, what we need to do is really break these fibers down, okay? We need to get uh, a big enough surface so we've got enough contact with oxygen around them uh, for the pyrolysis to turn into combustion, incomplete combustion. And uh, so he's just going really fast and then he's going to slow down and he's going to show you the difference in color between those two different powders. Okay, so what we're looking for is we're actually looking for that powder to be uh, uh, have a quite a coarseness to it. Okay, that way we know he's pushing that uh, the correct downward pressure to it and uh, we're not looking. So, no problem, so, okay. Okay, so it's a very, very fine powder, okay? Very fine powder, that's no, um, uh, uh, very, very little, very little downward pressure. And he's just gonna do one quick last blast on it, just to show you the difference in the consistency. So when you're doing your fibro, have a look, see what's going on. There are a lot of other variables, we could do this all day, we could do this all day, but uh, have a look at the powder, and what you're looking for is a nice coarse powder in there. It's not the right colour because it hasn't been going for long enough, etc. But it's just to show you that breakdown. What I hope, guys, that we've done is just broaden the horizons just a little bit, start to question everything that you know uh, about fire, really break it down into the nitty gritty uh, of what's going on. Thank you to Adam and for Jay for taking the abuse uh, for the senior instructor Kev with his scientific knowledge there. If you've got any questions, we need to shoot off the stage now, but come over and see us over at the store. Gladly uh, play around with the fire bow and answer any questions that you've got. But in the meantime, guys, thank you very much.